In this video, I'll show you how to make professionally looking PCBs using a UV printer. Here is one example. Let's start from the prerequisites. First, you'll need some protective gloves, glasses and a mask. Then you'll need acetone, sodium bicarbonate, which acts as a developer solution for the UV film, hot plate or clothes iron, contactless thermometer, an action, for example, ferric chloride or potassium persulfate or sodium persulfate, three chemically resistant containers, Dremel for cutting the PCB, a masking tape, a UV sensitive film, KiCad, free cut with step up plugin installed, the link is in the description, and of course a resin printer. I assume that you already have your PCB project ready. Let's start from measuring the PCB outline and let's start the free cut. I assume that you have the step up plugin installed, so select it from the workbench. Now import the PCB into FreeCAD. And now you can see that we have two layers. We don't really care about the bias on the top layer, so let's remove that. Now we can run the join operation to connect everything together. And finally, we can extrude this model so that it's three-dimensional and we'll be able to import this to the slicer of our 3D printer. The last step here is to select the mesh and export it to OBJ file. Now launch our slicer program. In my case, I'm using Leaksy Slicer and Mars 2 Pro resin printer. Import the design and also don't forget to mirror it. And here are the settings of the slicer. For this particular UV resistive film I'm using, I'm using 60 seconds of exposure time. Once this is set, we can export it to the printer. Now, time to prepare the PCB. Mark the dimensions you measured in KiCad. Cut the PCB with a Dremel. And now we'll need acetone to clean the PCB properly. This will make the adhesion of the UV resistive film better and help etching faster. Finally, load the sliced file to the printer and mark roughly the outline of the PCB using a masking tape. This will help align everything perfectly. Now we'll be applying the UV resistive film. Make sure that the room is dark and there is no UV radiation because we don't want the film exposed and cut the film. Make sure that the film is cut in such a way that it's slightly larger than the PCB. Now use two pieces of tape to remove the protective layer from the film. Apply the film to the PCB with your fingers. Make sure that there are no air bubbles. Now heat a plate. The optimal temperature is slightly below 100 degrees. Here I actually overheated it. And put the PCB on the hot plate. Apply some pressure with your fingers and be careful not to burn yourself. This will make the foil adhere to the PCB. Usually no longer than 10 seconds is needed. Be also careful not to use too much temperature because it can actually damage the film. Now cut two sides of the film. This way we'll be able to fit the PCB into the notch that we created by applying the painter's tape to the printer. Now align the PCB with the template on the printer. And run the exposure. If everything was set correctly, the PCB will be exposed for one minute. And this is what the result looks like. Use two stripes of tape in order to remove the protective film from the top of the PCB. Now, time to prepare the developer solution. Heat water to somewhere between 40 and 50 degrees Celsius. Pour it into the container. Here I use 200 milliliters of water. And use sodium carbonate. Two teaspoons should be enough for this amount of water. Heat up some water to roughly 50 degrees in a pot. And promise me that you will not be eating from this pot ever again. Now. Mix everything well. And once the sodium bicarbonate is dissolved, you can put your PCB into the solution. Here I'm wearing gloves. This is not really a dangerous chemical. However, the paint itself can be not too healthy. So it's better safe than sorry. You can use a small brush in order to speed up the process. 
Once it's done, it should look somewhat like this. Now, if there are any damages on the surface of the film, you can correct them with a permanent marker. Now let's prepare the etching solution. Here I use one part of ammonium persulfate per five parts of water. Mix everything well and again, the working temperature is roughly 50 degrees. Shake it well until the copper is fully etched. Once the process is finished, the PCB should look somewhat like this. You can see that the copper is actually fully etched, but there is still the protective film remaining. We are going to remove this protective film using acetone. Pour in some acetone into some container. Make sure that this container is resistant to acetone, because some plastics can be actually dissolved by that. Shake it well until the film is fully stripped. After a while, it will look like this. Congratulations, your PCB is finished. In my opinion, the greatest benefit of this method is that it can be used not only for etching PCBs, but also for some really cool panels. For example, I made this panel using the same method, but instead of the etching solution, I used a blackening solution for brass. You can also use it for galvanic chemistry and many other processes. The only limit is your imagination.